before I share our uh, practices on how we conduct the CBIF DLP in our school, so let me give you a brief background of the institution where I currently serve. So Eastern Quezon College is a private non-sectarian institution in Gumaca, Quezon. So it was founded by Dr. Vicente Arvilar in 1947, and its current president is Dr. Arnel Pedro V. Redelas. So it is among one of the uh, schools under the supervision of the Department of Education in the Division of Quezon. So currently, the school has 90 teaching and non-teaching employees. It offers complete basic education course with 929 students, of which 174 are senior high school students. It has three colleges in the tertiary level, the College of Education, College of Business Administration, and College of Arts, with uh, 929 students all in all. It also offers graduate study programs being an extension of Marinduque State College graduate education. So currently we have 116 enrollees in the master's and doctor program. So though we are private institution, majority of our students are beneficiaries of the government subsidies such as the senior high school voucher program and the educational service contracting of the fund for assistance to private education. Thus, our school has to look for an alternative but effective delivery mode of instruction to our learners. According to Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So since we took that initial step of using the CVIF DLP, there was no turning back on our part. So let me share with you our CVIF DLP journey. So the idea of the DLP was introduced to us by our visionary school president, Dr. Rodellas. So in April of 2017, Together with our school president and fellow program coordinators, we flew to uh, Tabilana City in Bohol to attend the 7th CBIF DLP training at Bohol Tropics with no less than the founders of the program themselves, Dr. Christopher and Maria Victoria Carpio Bernito. So after the training, we immediately looked into the profile of our learners, the school resources and the school curriculum, and discussed ways on how we are going to implement the new program beginning school year 2017-2018. Since then, the CVIF DLP has become part of our annual in-service training for teachers. So here are the glimpses of the series of seminars and workshops conducted from 2017 to June 5, June 15 of 2020. So that was on the screen is our first faculty training for the basic education faculty members is our second faculty training again for the basic education faculty members. On the third run of our in-service training on the implementation of the CVI FDLP held last May 20 of 2019. We had the faculty members from the tertiary level together with the basic education teachers as our participants. The inclusion of the college faculty members in the group was initiated by Dr. Rodellas because he would like to introduce DLP to the tertiary level. So beginning uh, first semester of the school year 2019-2020, selected teachers in the college level started to use learning activity sheet or LAS as part of their teaching strategy. I can see that it was a very timely decision for Dr. Rodellas because we had just started the second semester last January of this year when COVID-19 started to spread and affect the landscape of our educational system. When the entire Luzon was placed under ECQ last March 16, the operation of the school had to stop and we were all and we were all required to stay at home. We have to think of an effective and immediate solution to allow our college students to finish the semester while they are at home. 
that was when the use of the learning activity sheet or LES came into full swing in the college level. So based on the report of the department coordinators to, during our Execom last uh, June 16, most of the students were able to comply with their course requirements through the use of the LES. So on the screen is our Ford faculty training. This time we have the senior high school teachers who shared their best practices to the elementary teachers. Given the current situation, the elementary department of our institution will also apply the CBIF DLP among the elementary pupils. Therefore, they need to revisit the program and review how it will be implemented effectively. So in the pipeline is a follow-up training for college faculty members uh, this coming June 19 and 20. Uh, way back in June of 2017, we were very excited to introduce DLP to our stakeholders, the parents and the students, but, uh, but uh, to initiate change from the traditional approach to the CBIF DLP approach was not an easy task. There were challenges from the parents and the students alike that we have to overcome, particularly during the first few months of its implementation. The students even joked that they have grown an extra finger referring to their kalus or kalyo in Tagalog because of the period of time that they had to spend in writing the concepts. Even the teachers had to adjust to the program. They even just said that they are like brand models of this particular um, brand of detergent powder because they need to have bisa ng sampung kamay in checking the students' LAS. But as school leaders, we have to motivate and let them see the reasons behind the practice. So eventually, our stakeholders started to embrace the program. So for three years prior to the pandemic, the senior high school adheres to the components of the program. On the screen are the non-negotiable features of the CBIF, the parallel classes, the activity-based multi-domain learning, the strategic study and rest period, and of course, the in-school comprehensive portfolios. Okay, on the screen uh, is an example of how we conduct our parallel classes. So this is the uh, class program of grade 11, humanities and social sciences section. So at 7.30 to 8.30, uh, we have the core subject oral communication in context. In the same way, the ABM section, as well as the uh, gas section are also having their oral communication and context with the same expert teacher and the same uh, facilitators. So the school conducts parallel classes on core and applied subjects with the exception of the specialized subjects since we only have one section of each strand in the academic track, gas, humes, and ABM. So notice also on the screen that every Thursday, we consider that as our strategic rest period for our students. So they have less, uh, they have mentally less, uh, mentally less demanding subject in the morning, which is their PE class. And in the afternoon, they have uh, individual consultation or remedial work with their teachers. So this could also be passively used for other extracurricular activities. Uh, in line with the strategic rest period, the school also observes no homework policy. So since the students are in school from 7 to 5 p.m. and they only have one hour vacant period to do their task for the following day, so they cannot bring their learning activities at home. So they have to finish their schoolwork in school so that after the school period, when they go home, they can spend more quality time with their parents and with their friends. On the screen are some of the classroom scenarios during regular sessions, examination period, and the application of the uh, activity-based multi-domain learning. So we have to take into consideration that 
there is no introductory lecture given by the expert teacher before students work on the activity. Lectures, discussion, and interaction are always done after the students have worked on the learning activity. So this practice helps our student to perform individual tasks to help them to become self-sufficient and good problem solvers. So inside the classroom, the students talk less, but they do more. So this also follows the Montessori method, never help a child at a task at which he or she can succeed. So initially, DLP was developed to address concerns regarding mathematics and science subjects. But on the screen are pictures of our students applying the, the DLP to other different learning areas. The students are also required to prepare comprehensive student portfolios, which is actually the compilation of all their learning activity sheets for the entire semester. Through this, the students can monitor their own progress. And as you would notice, the cover of their uh, portfolio showcases their artistic and creative ability. So the teachers are also required to prepare their own portfolio containing all the learning activities, depth and learning competencies, long examinations with table of specifications and key answer. Uh, with an easy access to the internet, the students become more familiar to pop and contemporary cultures. Here at Eastern Quezon College, we like to train our students in developing Filipino cultural values. That's why during school programs and culminating activities in physical education, we encourage our students to perform Filipino songs and dances. Similarly, during the celebration of our college week, aside from the sports like basketball and volleyball, we have Palaro ng Lahi to introduce the students to the Filipino games. Through this essential features of the DLP, we were able to develop our learners holistically. So at the end of the school year 2017, 2018, 76 out of 105 of our grad grade 12 students passed the state colleges and universities entrance examination near our locality. In the following school year, 74 out of 100 passed the entrance examinations in the same state colleges and universities. Now on the screen is, uh, is the recent accomplishment of our students. So for this year, for this school year, they even ventured to uncharted territories by taking and passing the entrance examination to University of the Philippines and qualifying examinations for notable scholarship programs like TOST and SM Foundations and even a full scholarship in, for international students in the University of Alabama in the USA. So this might probably seem uh, ordinary for other schools, but for us and for our students, these are new experiences and we consider this as our achievements also. Okay, so develop, the development of our students to their full potential wouldn't be possible without the help of the government and the private sector. So uh, on the screen are some of the activities of the students wherein we tapped the government and the private sector. So as we look forward for the opening of classes, this is school year 2020-2021, uh, we see ourselves still implementing the DLP program because we have seen the effect of the DLP program to our students. So, but there will be some modifications or a little bit modification in how we are going to implement it this year. Uh, we have to modify the program in line with the guidelines of the different agencies involved. So since we are not allowed to have face-to-face -face session, there will be no parallel classes to be conducted this school year, but the other components of the DLB will still be implemented. So our school will be utilizing the hybrid learning, which is a combination of remote learning online and remote learning print. So on both modalities, the students will still receive the same learner's activity sheet. Uh, with its three essential components, the learning content, the example, and activity, but through different modes. 
So the teachers have uh, roughly uh, two months prior to the opening of classes on August 24. And so they are now very busy at home preparing the LAS. So in this period of uncertainty due to pandemic, the success of the students' learning progress depends on the collaboration of the school, the family, and the community. So the students are expected to be at home. The parents must help the school in monitoring the, the students' performance. They will also be responsible for the mindsetting of their students. The teachers, as always, are ready to assist every learner according to given schedule. They will also provide monthly um, consultation with the parents regarding the students' progress. So for those who will be receiving their lessons in print, the school has to coordinate with the barangay officials for efficient and safe distribution and collection of materials, again, as a schedule. So according to an African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. So with the collaboration of the school, the family, and the community, we believe that there will be no Filipino learners who will be left behind. So if the CVIF DLP program works for us, it can also work for you. So as we contemplate on the future of the education landscape of our learners, let us remember this famous line from Confucius, which is clearly aligned to Chan Dewey's principle of learning by doing, one of the key principles that supports the CBIM DLP. I hear and I forget, I see and I believe, I do and I understand. So from Eastern Kesson College uh, community, uh, we thank you for allowing us to share our practices of the CBIF DLP.